Hello, today's video is to demonstrate a mid-1960s Dan Electro Cadet model 123. Uh, the Dan Electro Cadet is very similar to the Sears Silvertone model 1430 uh, that we see here in this schematic. Uh, the only difference that I could find was that this uh, little transformer uh, does not exist in the Dan Electro Cadet, but other than that, um, it's pretty much identical. Um, I've made a couple changes. Um, we're going to take a look at the changes that were made and also um, stick around a bit later and we'll, we'll demo it um, with a guitar. But I um, wanted to outline some of the changes that I made um, to improve the amp. First of all, for safety reasons, I've added a uh, three-prong cord. Uh, the third prong is uh, tied to the chassis. Um, over here you can see also uh, eventually everything grounds out to the chassis as well so any stray um, 120 volt AC is going to be sucked up essentially by this ground um, so it'll be a better ground than your body is uh, these are known as widow makers because they have kind of a floating um, uh, chassis design uh, which uses uh, direct AC uh, on all the the filaments as you can see here here are the filaments uh, for the 12 AU7 as well um, and all of these actually, this resistor, uh, the 35, uh, 50, and 12, all, all of these, the voltage drop should add up to about 100 and 120 or so um, volts. Um, these are known as Widowmaker amplifiers because uh, if you plug the cable in uh, the wrong way, and if you're you know if you're standing barefooted on concrete. Um, and something something goes wrong, you could actually be electrocuted by one of these. But uh, with this third prong, uh, that's that's um, not likely to happen anymore. Um, again, this transformer is missing, so the 12 AU6 is essentially just tied over here um, in series, just like uh, just like the rest of these. So might as well draw that over there. Uh, so essentially, this is what we have. That none of this is uh, present in the cadet. Uh, one of the changes I made, I, I changed um, I changed all the, the filter caps um, to new ones. Uh, this one is now a, a 50 microfarad up from a 30 which was the stock value. I did that to beef up the output um, just a little bit and give it a little more drive um, and it did actually uh, succeed in doing that as we'll demonstrate. Um, the preamp tube is a 12AU6 which is a pentode uh, which gives you a lot of a lot of good gain um, uh, for a small tube but um, it didn't have any uh, bypass uh, capacitor or resistor to ground it was just um, it was just biased direct to ground so I've added a bias resistor of 47 um, ohms and a bypass capacitor of, of 25 microfarads and that has actually uh, beefed up the tone considerably by doing that. Uh, if, if you have one of these amps and you want to improve it uh, quite a bit, uh, these changes right here um, are the ones I would recommend. Uh, add, this, add about a 47 uh, ohm resistor, a 25 uh, microfarad bypass cap here. Uh, beef this one up to about a 50 or so. Uh, I actually don't know how much good this is doing. This one did more good uh, than this. Uh, but I went ahead and beefed it up anyway uh, just to be... Uh, kind of on the safe side um, and uh, also this this grounded cable those were all the changes that were done uh, now let's take a look at the guts okay here are the guts of the amp um, we're missing a little shield I, I don't have it on but there's a shield that actually covers uh, the inputs here um, and the pots as well that I have taken off at the moment um, but uh, here are your inputs um, your volume and tone pots uh, here is your preamp tube, the 12AU6. Here is your power tube, and here is the rectifier. Uh, here are the new. Um, here are all the new capacitors uh, that I installed. Um, there's one in there that did not exist. Uh, this wasn't in the original design either. Um, this is the original uh, cap that was taken out. Um, and actually I'll probably end up just removing it completely from the amp. Sorry about focusing issues here. Um, but uh, the, from the code here we can see it's 1964, 50th week. 
Uh, the pots are also from about the 50th, the 48th week of 1964. Um, the Fisher speaker, at least I believe this is a Fisher 1056. I think is Fisher. Uh, that's 1965, uh, the sixth week. Uh, so we are pretty much firmly within 1965 as a date. Here's 1964, 46th week, week it looks like on this little transformer. So we're about uh, at the turn of 1964 and 1965. It was probably actually sold uh, right after Christmas of 1964, I would imagine. Um, but uh, these are the these are the guts. Um, now let's let's take a look at the outside of the amp before we have a listen. Okay, uh, we're back uh, here, and uh, here's the lovely Planet um, three-in-one capacitor that we have removed. Um, here's the back of the amp. Uh, we can see we have a fuse holder, um, on-off switch, tone, volume. Uh, it says Cadet Model 123, musical instrument amplifier. Here are our uh, tubes visible through these three windows. 35W4 rectifier. There's our power tube and our preamp pentode. Uh, Dan Electro Corporation, Neptune, New Jersey. 117 volts, which has gone up a little bit since then. Uh, this is 40 watts, probably total heat dissipation. Uh, here's the top original handle present. Uh, the front's really cute. Um, got the little Dan Electro logo at the bottom. Nice wheat grill. Um, the cabinet, of course, is the typical. Dan Electro fiberboard material, which isn't that great, but um, we can overlook that for a cheap amp. Well, let's take a listen to what this thing uh, what this thing sounds like. Um, actually, before we demonstrate the tone, one thing I did want to uh, show here um, with the changes that were made, um, a, a slight problem has arisen. Um, whenever this amp is in the off position, uh, it actually hums now, and you can hear it. I don't know if I can get close enough for you to hear it. Let's turn it around here. But you get a distinctive hum. And I think what that has to do with um, is now we've created with the with the ground, uh, I think we've created a potential between true uh, earth ground and uh, other parts of the circuit. Um, that could be rectified by moving the uh, moving the switch from this side of the plug uh, from the neutral uh, over here um, somewhere like you can put it before or after the fuse uh, but if you wire it on this side instead of this side um, that should get rid of that hum whenever it's in the off position and just to demonstrate that uh, we will actually remove this fuse uh, from the circuit momentarily here and show that when we're off and we remove the fuse it stops. So what could uh, what I could do here? I'm probably not going to bother uh, on this one. But what I could do is, is move this switch if it bothered me too badly um, to have that hum while it's in the off position. I could move the switch to the other side of that circuit, and it would stop doing that. Um, but let's get our fuse back in here and uh, and check out some of the tones. One other. One other thing before we move to move on here, um, yeah, I said earlier I probably wouldn't move this switch. Well, I've decided to go ahead and do that. Um, I've eliminated it from this side, so this is all continuous now. I move the switch to the other side of the fuse uh, in this position. So um, if you're if you're doing if you're planning on uh, doing all these changes, uh, moving this switch is pretty essential to having all of the. Um, all of the AC completely uh, shut off and no hum when the amp is in the off position. So I just wanted to quickly uh, point that out before we move along. Okay, let's check out some of the tones of this thing. For the purpose of this demo, I'll be using a 1965 or 66 uh, Valco made Airline uh, three-quarter size um, Rezo glass guitar. And the Rezo glass are made of actually uh, fiberglass bodies. Um, uh, these are these are pretty cool guitars. This one plays really nice as well.
1965 Dan Electro uh, Cadet uh, model 123 and uh, in a Valco airline uh, three-quarter size resin glass.